We Aussies really know how to step up to the plate when it comes to saving our wildlife. In the case of our beloved koala, whose numbers are in quick decline, we have scientists, researchers and rescuers dedicated to protecting them. But just because you're not one of those doesn't mean you can't make a difference. Just ask Alex Harris. She's created a koala research site that everyone in Australia can contribute to. The people have really taken to this and we're getting reports from all around the country. We've got several thousand reports now of koala sightings from far north Queensland right down to the middle of South Australia. And we're actually getting more information than, than we thought we would initially. But the first point is, how can you save the koala if you don't even know where they live? You know, and so much about the koala is assumed. We, we have assumptions about how many koalas are left, where they live and what's going on. So I thought, well, it'd be really great to get people involved to start reporting on koalas in their neighbourhoods. And that's been really, really effective. So you can go on and now you've got the map where you can just see where they all are and you can even see, is it where, where sick ones are and where there've been yes. like injuries and yes. deaths as well, like from cars? That's right, because we're, we're not just, we're not counting koalas, we're mapping their locations, but we're also mapping the points of impact. So uh, people are reporting where a koala's been hit by a car, so we know exactly where that koala's been hit by the car, so councils can actually take effective action to, to minimise the risk to koalas in that area. So we're getting points of impact, we're getting um, colony locations and activity. So it's, it's being really useful. Excellent. Now, uh, on my time on Totally Wild, I've done a fair share of koala spotting and I haven't had much luck, so I guess that's one thing you need to get down pat to actually be able to know where they are. But it's dead easy. When you know what to look for, Pip, it's dead easy. Should we give it a shot? Let's go. So Pip, the mistake most people make when they're looking for a koala is they look up. That's what I was just doing. Good. So what you'll be <laughs> really doing. hard to find looking up. So yeah. there, there are three things to look for. One, the first thing is the smell. They have a very distinctive eucalyptus wee. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is poo. They have a bullet shaped poo that can be actually quite easy to find on the ground. Yeah. And the third thing is the scratches on the tree. So we're looking for two parallel marks at an angle and then some little cross hatching at the bottom. So when you find those three things, especially with the fresh poo, there's a koala. All right. Eyes and nose peeled. Let's go. Let's go. I tell you what, I didn't want to get my hopes up, but nature has completely outdone itself because look at that gorgeous little koala hugging the tree. <gasps> He's adorable. Aren't we lucky? Lucky, and we're in the middle of a car park where there's loads of cars coming in and out, so that is not where I would have picked the baby koala no, to be. That's right, Pip. Most people think koalas are way out there in the bush somewhere, when in fact they live and die among us. So everyone needs to get involved and look for and look out for koalas. And it's... know that we can do it. We can make a difference. That's right. They're just too important. <laughs> 